humiliating, degrading, and demoralizing. You can't wash the taste out of your mouth fast enough. It's gut-wrenching. It lasts for an awful long time. These types of crimes are the most vile, disgusting type of crime that a person could be subjected to. And it's not something that you want to discuss or talk about because it isn't looked at the same as a physical assault. Unfortunately, in my career, um, I've seen staff go through some very, very hard times. Can you think of another profession where you would go into work and it's likely that you are going to be assaulted by another human being's bodily fluids? Everyone deserves respect, no matter what line of work they're in. When somebody says that a dignity assault is just part of the job, or you should have known that when you took the job, or you're not hurt because it wasn't a physical assault, I think it's the most disrespectful thing that you could say to a staff member. It's very easy to imagine something being thrown on you. It's not very easy to imagine what goes through a person's mind. Uh, I'm not unfamiliar with this. Instantaneously, you start thinking about, am I gonna be scarred for life? Was this urine? Was this feces? Does this person have a disease that threw this on me? And am I going to take that home to my kids? And am I going to have to live with this? And then to regain your composure, it's not an easy thing to do. I think it's hard for the average person to appreciate the psychological effect that it has on somebody. These are very demeaning and vile crimes. And it's not something that you just turn around and walk away from and forget about easily. When you have something like have somebody masturbating to you or in front of you or have somebody throw something at you, it changes who you are. Imagine if you were out on the street and somebody pulled up next to you and they flashed themselves at you. Think about what that would do to you. And then here we are inside prison and this can happen to you almost on a daily basis. It happens frequently and it changes who you are. So I would say for those people who think that it doesn't affect you, they're wrong. This type of crime has never happened to me, but I remember as a young trooper, I watched a video of a KKK rally and there were troopers standing in line and the protesters were allowed to stand there and spit on the troopers and the troopers were not allowed to do anything. And I remember thinking how appalling and degrading it was that someone was being allowed to you know, spit on another person. These types of crimes inside a prison aren't any different. And in fact, some of them are much more vile because we're talking about human feces or urine. I cannot think of any circumstance where it would be acceptable for anyone to throw any type of substance like this on another person, but I can't imagine how awful and degrading it must make the, the MDOC staff feel. We opened the door to give prisoner medication. Two of us were there along with the nurse. As we opened the door, the prisoner immediately threw a cup full of urine and water at the, uh, my partner and I. The prisoner then charged at us through the door and we had to take the prisoner down as well. We were just doing our job. Working in a predominantly male system, I often face adverse situations that women in the civilian world would be appalled by. I've been assaulted and subjected to a variety of misogynistic behaviors by prisoners. Every so often, a prisoner goes beyond being problematic, and it becomes very clear that we're dealing with a sexual predator. One such prisoner is Reynolds, a serial sexual deviant who thinks it's okay to expose himself to female correctional staff, to manipulate the system by degrading female staff, 
and to prey upon what he may perceive as weakness. He makes it abundantly clear that if given the chance, he'd go even further. Imagine if he were to catch an unsuspecting victim in the civilian world who wouldn't know what kind of loathsome, misogynistic predator that he is. While he exposed himself, uttered lewd comments, and made violent threats against us, we decided to help protect society from this predator by documenting his extensive pattern of sexual misconduct. I'm hoping the prosecuting attorney seeks the fullest sanctions against him allowed by law. Shame on you and your behavior, Prisoner Reynolds. I choose not to be your victim. These experiences have had a big impact on my life. Um, for instance, I've been sitting in my office interviewing a prisoner, which in your office you think you're in a safe place. And my phone rang and I turned for maybe a second to answer my phone and it took the prisoner just a split second to take his penis out of his pants and start masturbating to the point where before I even turned my head, I knew what he was doing. That was humiliating, it was degrading to me, and to this day, it probably happened, you know, five, seven years ago. I remember that like it was yesterday. Prisoner Anderson threw a cup of liquid in my face. He said it was just water. Of course he's going to say that. Some staff said it smelled like urine. Others said they were pretty sure it was water. I'll never know. Do I need to be worried about hepatitis? Should I stop kissing my kids at night? When he did that, he stated, Sue me, motherfucker. Well, he's getting what he asked for. I'll never know exactly why he did that. How would you feel if this happened to you? For me, I've always kept my family in the dark about incidents like this that have happened. They know what I do for a living. They know um, some things that have occurred. Uh, I tried to shield them as much as possible. They know that being a corrections officer is one of the, if not the most dangerous jobs out there in the state of Michigan. And I don't need them to worry. Um, so directly, I've never told them. Directly, I don't think they have been affected. Indirectly, yeah. Because when I say I can leave it at work, it still travels with me when I go home. So indirectly, yeah, it might affect my mood. It may affect my demeanor when I get home, not just for that day, but for days afterwards, because we are human. And it is a part of life that we've had to deal with for as long as I've been employed. This has been going on. And not just that, but any type of assault. He stated, if you want to make something of it, you better know this will never end. I don't give a fuck about you or your bitch wife. I'll be out in the world real soon. I'll always know where you work and when you're not home. Prior to all this, I have never had any bad words or dealings with Prisoner Thompson. He is a very dangerous prisoner. The pressure and stress of being a corrections officer, I think at times, goes uh, overlooked. And it may not be a direct result, but indirectly, yeah, I think it probably has had an effect on them. Uh, but again, you know, my standard answer every day is when family asks me how my day went, and it's always good, you know, just had to be there. You know, any, any, they'll ask me anything happened? Nope. You know, everything's all right. You know, my wife knows that if something were to really seriously happen, and this happened in the past, uh, I'll tell her. But things like this, you know, we try to keep quiet, try to shield them as much as possible. You know, it also, maybe it's a little bit of embarrassment too. You know, you always want your family to think the most of you. And if you have to come home in the middle of a day and take a shower in prisoner clothing, there's going to be questions. And fortunately, my children didn't see that or my wife. Um, but you know, it could be a little bit embarrassing as well. I try not to bring my work home with me, but I believe that when that happened to me, it's clear when I get home, I'm not the same. Um, 
I have actually a unique situation where my spouse works in corrections as well. So I have the ability to go home and be able to talk to him about something like this so he understands where I'm coming from. My daughter, on the other hand, she doesn't understand. So if mom comes home from work and she's off or in a bad mood, you know, she, she doesn't get it. So they get where I work, they know that there's some odd things that may happen on a daily basis. And I think after 22 years, she's learned how to kind of read me, but it's not the same. It's not the same as mom goes off to an office setting where normal people, normal things happen on a daily basis. MCO looking forward in an attempt to combat this inconsistency thought it would be best to form a coalition consisting of the Michigan State Police, the Michigan Department of Corrections, and the Prosecutors Association of Michigan. And by bringing all of those parties to the table, we would raise awareness to exactly what the problems were involved in those inconsistent prosecutions. Working with all these other agencies, on this common goal has really helped to bring perspective to the situation. There are a lot of people that care, a lot of people that care about what goes on inside of prisons and what happens to correction officers. It's important that we have this coalition so that we're all on the same page, so that we're all working towards one unified goal, bringing light to these types of crimes. Just because you work in a prison doesn't mean that you forfeit your right to protection of the law. And we need to send a message to prisoners that this type of behavior will not be tolerated. And that is what we're doing in this initiative, is working cooperatively with our partners in law enforcement, our partners with MCO, to send that message and to ensure that every step of the way we are tackling these events when they happen. It's a tremendous thing when you can have that many law agencies in one room, coming together for one common goal. I think it means an awful lot to our corrections officers to know that somebody has their back for once and they're looking out for their best interest. I believe that this is long overdue. I think that our officers and our staff that work for the Michigan Department of Corrections deserve to be held in the highest regard. And I believe that the Officer Dignity Initiative is going to impact every single person that has contact with these inmates because chances are that if you work face to face with an inmate you've had this happen to you whether you've been dressed out with urine or feces being thrown on you or you've had an inmate actually masturbate to you or had his penis hanging out of his pants or something to that so the impact that officer dignity is going to have on the staff of the michigan department of Corrections is going to be enormous, and it's, it's great. I'm very excited about it, and I'm glad this is happening. It's nice to know that somebody's got your back. Mm -hmm.